Today, I want to talk to you about the different types of convincing evidences that you might be finding when you're putting facts on your fact cards. So the two goals of this are to identify the types of convincing evidence used in argument. Um, we are going to go over five of them. And then we're going to talk really briefly about which evidences are stronger. Because of these five, there are a few that stand out and are more convincing than other types. Uh, please pay attention to this lesson. There is a Google Form quiz in the next folder when you are finished this that will ask you to recall the different types. If you'd like to take notes, you're more than welcome to do so. You're also welcome to watch this more than once. All right, so convincing evidences. All right, the more evidence you offer, the stronger your argument will be. Therefore, you're more likely to persuade someone to agree with your opinion. That's the entire point of argument writing. You've selected a topic, you've taken a position on that topic. Your job now is to try to prove your point that you are correct. Now, although we value your opinion, you're going to want to kind of go in and find experts and find websites that have more credibility than you do. Not that any of you don't have any cred, but as a 12-year-old or 13-year-old in middle school, we're not considering you experts yet or people whose opinions we should listen to or people who've conducted research in order to support it. So you finding the people who've already done that research is the research you're doing. Okay, so the first type of convincing evidence we're going to talk about is prediction. Prediction focuses on analyzing facts and predicting what they mean for the future. So this isn't happening. This is saying what will happen. So my example in the gray box here is, for example, if you buy our exercise program, you will become a healthier, stronger, and more confident version of yourself. This you will is saying this will happen. Now, can I buy that exercise program, still sit on the couch, still eat cheesecake and never do anything, and then not become healthier, stronger, or more confident? Absolutely. All right. So prediction is great because it's saying it will happen or is most likely to happen. There is no guarantee here, though. All right. So just be careful. Prediction is a great tool. We use it all the time. In fact, if you probably heard it in the news, if we all stay home and we all keep our faces covered when we go into public and stay six feet apart, we should see a leveling off of the curve all right, or a flattening of the curve, and eventually start to see some of these coronavirus cases decrease. This is prediction. It hasn't happened yet. We're saying what we're doing now could cause this. All right, that's your first type. Second type. Our second type is statistics. Statistics is using numbers from research or facts as back, evidence to back up your opinion. All right, numbers, guys, are hard to argue with. So my example here in the gray box is the 1,111 students at Ballard Kinwood Middle School will miss a total of 14 weeks of school due to the emergency COVID-19 closure. So if you look at my numbers here, which is how many students attend school and how many weeks we will be missing, all right, that is statistics. Statistics is quoting any number to help back up. That could be a percentage. It could be a number, all right, and any way that numbers break down. These are strong, guys. It's hard to argue with numbers, okay? Great evidence to use. Your third type of evidence is observation. Observation is what you can see. All right, either this is through use of pictures or other visuals, describing in detail what something looks like. You're constantly taking this in all the time. My example in the gray box, thousands of people per day are showing up at hospital emergency rooms with COVID-19 symptoms, overwhelming the healthcare system. And you've probably seen pictures like this one on the right, all right, on news outlets. So here's a hospital and here's this line of people lining up waiting to get in there, okay, who are sick and not well. We observe how many people are in line and that kind of supports, all right, our statement that thousands of people per day are showing up at hospitals. The reason this is not a statistic is I didn't give a number. Saying thousands of or hundreds of is an estimate and estimates are not numbers, all right, um, not when you're not giving something concrete. Uh, just try to answer on your next math quiz that the answer is somewhere in the hundreds. I guarantee that's not a correct number to use, okay? So observation is what you can see, this thousands of people per day, all right? All right, your next type, expert testimony. Expert testimony is another really strong type of evidence, all right? It uses the expertise or specific knowledge of a person who would know a lot about the subject. Guys, experts are just that. 
They're people who know a lot, who've studied a long time, and whose opinions we trust. Be careful, or you just don't want to take anyone's word for it. I wouldn't quote Ann Smith, woman I met at the bus stop this morning, said that COVID-19 symptoms are, eh, maybe Ann Smith at the bus stop was great, but if I quoted what's in the gray box instead? When asked about mandating a federal stay-at-home order, Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases since 1984, said, quote, if you look at what's going on in this country, I do not understand where we're not doing that. We really should be. So what you're going to notice here is Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. All right, that's an impressive title, especially this night since 1984. He's held that position a really long time. He'd be an expert. He's someone we would listen to. Notice when I use it, I have to include the person's name. I have to include the person's title. All right, what makes them an expert? And I usually use a quote from them direct. All right, just like when we lift text evidence from a text and we do not change it. Expert testimony, testimony guys, you do not want to paraphrase. Okay, um, if you find this, use it exactly like you found it and put it on one of those fact cards that say direct quote. Remember those last four, number 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, or last five, um, you can go ahead and put a direct quote right on there. All right. All right. And then our last type, comparison. Comparison is a convincing type of evidence that takes facts about the subject you're writing about and compares them to how it's used or done today or something that's similar. So in keeping with our examples about the current state of our world in the gray box, I have, for example... The world has not seen a global pandemic like COVID-19 since Ebola in 2016, although COVID-19 has already caused more death worldwide than Ebola did two years ago. So what I put in red here is the comparison. I'm comparison, comparing COVID-19 to Ebola, two different pandemics. All right, and you can see I could put this chart over here is where I got this information. All right, and COVID-19 has already caused more death worldwide than Ebola. So that whole van is that comparative term. All right. Um, advertisers and people who are looking to convince you use this all the time. If you look on the news, you'll see that, um, you know, Tylenol won't upset your stomach like ibuprofen will. There's a bounty paper towel commercial that when you swipe the counter, the bounties, the quicker picker upper and the spill is gone. The cheaper, t you know, the cheaper paper towel pushes it off the end and it spills all over. So those comparing evidences are very strong when talking about persuasion, too. All right, so those are the five different types of evidences that we're going to talk about. Just to go ahead and repeat, I think some of the most effective evidences you can use for sure are expert testimony. All right, hard to beat an expert in their field and a direct quote from them that directly supports your opinion. The second one that I would say was most strong is statistics, using numbers. All right, numbers are facts. All right, that you can't argue it's not an opinion. Weaker all right, are this prediction. It hasn't even happened and there's no guarantee. Like I said, I could buy this exercise program and then sit on my couch like an oaf. All right, that's certainly not going to help me become healthier, stronger, or more confident version of myself. All right, so prediction can be kind of weak. All right, and observation can be weak too. There's times. I said thousands of people per day. This picture doesn't support thousands. All right. It doesn't. It might not even support hundreds. There's not that many people there. So observation is good, but you have to be careful. People will trick your eye. All right. So it's not bad for you to observe this. You just have to be a little bit more careful. And then the last one is comparison. I do think this is effective. My hearing versus vision people. All right. This is going to be really effective for you. You're going to be using a lot of comparison as you go back and forth. You'll just be using other evidences as you're comparing. Okay, so your strongest types, again, expert testimony, statistics. I'd say comparison is your next strongest, and then observation and prediction. All right, so now that you've watched this, you're welcome to watch it again, or you can move on to the next folder and take your Google quiz. Remember, look for these evidences as you're researching so that your argument is strong.